Daniel, Daniel, so let's talk about let's talk about 23x. Oh my god, bro. Oh hell. I had a conversation it's with Daniel, Daniel Abayomi. He's a product designing tech bro that loves to read business books. In this video, we talked about his NGO, how he multiplied his income by 23, and dealing with stereotypes. So I'm here now eating fried potatoes and egg with plenty of beef. The only way to survive in Lagos because you need energy. <laughs> Hello, uh, my name is Daniel Bayomi, um, popularly known as Big Southern. Um, I'm a product designer. I'm very, very introverted, right? I, I feel like people see the outward appearance and assume I'm some party pooper or something, but I'm usually just indoor, um, very calm life. I love to read a lot. I can read any type of book. I play FIFA. I mean, if you, the out of the tax come through, let's, let's ball mouse. Um, I, I like music. Um, I have very good taste in music. So share me your playlist if you want. So, so I'm coming in with my own wine. Let's, let's, yeah. Okay. You're actually a good wine. It is? Okay, we're not advertising the brand. We don't do it. If you want me to do, come my pills. <laughs> Come my pills. Come my pills. Yeah. <laughs> How old are you? I'm 27. You used to be a front end dev. <laughs> why? Why the switch? What was it about product design that you know got you drawn to it? Or were you just tired of writing code? Uh, no, I, I was not tired of writing code. I was just. You can tell me the truth. It can whisper. Were you tired? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I was not tired. I, I was. Um, I've always loved design. Right, so I mean, I can say that with your space as well. Like, you have a very beautiful thank you, thank you, house. thank you, whatever the English word is. Yeah, but yeah. well, I just, I just always like the, like, I like the, um, the planning part of things, like the let's do the, I call it mod work, like let's go into like the strategy, let's start from scratch. But I feel like front end engineers are awesome, right? But then they, they come in when maybe like the vision has been set there's some kind of tangible version of the product which is maybe the prototype right and they now start to code right mm -hmm. which i used to do before but then i w i was always wondering i was curious to when you, you wanted guys, more yes like how many do you guys start how do you start so that's what we did transition means. and i think it's great because now you kind of like have both skills and yeah transferable skills things that you can transfer like okay you wake up tomorrow and you feel like you still want to go back into front of the engineering for whatever reason you can mm -hmm. and you also have the um product design experience as well yeah. and you are growing in your career is there a chance that you might be a pm in the near future i already do pm <laughs> i swear are you serious yeah i'm already writing as a criteria PRDs and stuff so okay so yeah so that so leads me to my next question it's like okay so when i think CDOs are not popular in this part of the country, if we if we are being very honest, in mm -hmm. this part of the world, right? And even in the America, where many things are happening, <laughs> um, they are not popular <laughs> as well as much. Yeah. So, what is like the growth path for someone doing product design? Like, when I think about someone in software engineering, I'm like, okay, you can start out as a software engineer, you can branch out into becoming a PM if you want, or you can stay on that software engineering track senior engineer, staff engineer, principal engineer, CTO, yeah. right? But for design, I I don't know what that path is like. And is that something that exists? And would you like to share? Um, so I think because the industry is changing, there was a time when people care more about the engineering side of things. But because design um, like kind of expands beyond just the interface right there's now people understand the psychology in fact you see business people bringing in designers into their meetings now just to see what are customers thinking how are they using the product what is the future of the product and designers are gaining more ground and more like recognition for their work so i feel like there is like more growth trajectory for designers right even you look at companies now some founders they're designers right you also look at like some companies the vp of something is a designer right it might probably not be moving pixels anymore but at least that still has a foundation skill. knowledge exactly so i feel like as a designer you you are very important like it's it's a very very mandatory role now especially if you are in digital technology space hi daniel so, <laughs> so i want to ask you about rejection 
um, I read <laughs> I read an article on uh, Rise about you a while back that you submitted 700 million applications <laughs> got a bunch of rejections yeah what made you keep submitting those applications because if it's me I would have gone back to my village what made me keep uh, I don't know I feel like I just I was just hopeful like one would click one day but it didn't click honestly like it, it didn't click at all so what happened was i had to talk to other people to get so i spoke to someone and the person was like oh, you should should we do your portfolio do this do that and i did that and it, it not started working out because the problem i had then was i was not getting the interviews at all so the rejection was coming from like after application nothing else then i noticed after i took a step back like started okay be thinking why i what value am i even bringing to the company hiring me, then I was able to define that like properly. Then I started getting interviews. Currently, I co-found um, an NGO, a Nigerian-based NGO um, called GrowTech. We are basically building like a pathway for teenagers to get into tech very early in their careers. So we are introducing them to um, learning resources. So we have partners like Geniza and the likes. Uh, we are introducing them to mentors. So mentors will like guide them through everything they need while they are building their career. And also we're getting them internships with different companies. So we're talking to like different companies, different startups, I can get them um, what they need, resources they need to elevate in their career. If anybody sees you, they'll be thinking, ah, Lagos big boy, Lagos bad boy, bad demon. You know, they'll be like, ah, Daniel, your name is now like, all the Larrys. <laughs> anyway, you see Larry, yeah, run, yeah, you get. They spot Larry. And your name is Larry, right? Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, and I've met you, and you seem completely different from your outward appearance. Mm -hmm. And I just want to know how, like, if people stereotype you a lot and, like, how you feel about those things and how you've been able to live through those experiences. So it's always surprising because, like, you don't even know me and you already have, like, this impression of me, which is fine. I mean, you always have your own opinion. But, like, I feel like if you take, like, maybe, like 30 more minutes to get to know the kind of person I am, you warm up to me, which is also a problem. Mm -hmm. Because like everyone wants to get to know me. I mean, I'm not trying to. Sorry, no. Uh, hey, hey, you're about to move, but everyone wants to get to me. Yeah, but I but... mean, let's let's start with the hair. Like you know, the hair. The it's not like the long dress, but it's dress, right? Yeah. The, the hair, earring. the beard, the earring. The like everything. the way you dress. Like you know, you are giving um, old school R and B shirts. <laughs> so like, I I kind of understand. Mm -hmm. That it's it's not easy for people like you because I mean I guess the retypes to myself. But my favorite book, mm, that was very difficult. But I love Atomic Habits by James Clare. This book, always read it. You should read it. Yeah, I'm, I'm reading for a second time now um, because I feel like the first time I was just it was like a wave. I, I didn't quite get the kind of value I wanted. Um, then I also like this book. Um, so if you're a designer, mid-level, junior, you should read this book called. Reimagine Design. It's a really good book. I read it two months ago. Um, I have different books. Um, the Psychology of Money, um, Thinking Fast and Slow, Still Like an Artist, um, Mere Christianity, Never Split Difference, um, Shoe Dog, Steve Jobs. So, so this is more like a, um, like a biography of um, Steve Jobs. Let's talk about 23X. <laughs> <laughs> no, you cannot. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you posted. Nobody asked you. Yeah, in review. Um, I did this. I did this. I twenty three x my income. We need to know how you did it. See, I don't know about people, but me sounds twenty three. I I really need to, cause X hundred naira. Unfortunately, when we were editing, we realized that the audio was bad. But some of the things Daniel talked about when we were having this 23x conversation was that he had to learn about his value. The first thing that he did was confidence in himself and the value he brings to an organization. And he had to reach out to people to mentor him, build a network, and just you know make friends in the industry. And even after he had done all of that, he realized that he couldn't negotiate. And he read a book about negotiation and that really helped him a lot and that was how he was able to negotiate his salary he's going to tell us what that book is yeah it's a really really good book um it will help you with like negotiating so it says negotiating as if your life depending on it honestly just negotiate your way to greatness to 23x mm -hmm.